everyone, you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. While Delhi's air quality continues to deteriorate, there is no end to farm fires in Punjab, which continues to rise, turning the national capital into a gas chamber. After years of promising solutions, if they came to power in Punjab, the Ahmadi Party government is now claiming that stubble burning in Punjab has no impact on the air quality in Delhi, pointing the finger at farm fires in Haryana adding that no aid has been delivered by the centre. In fact, for years, the Ahmadi Party has touted promises of providing financial aid to farmers to manage stubble and the deployment of bio-decomposers as an alternative to stubble burning. However, Punjab currently accounts for 80% of farm fires around the national capital. It's not Haryana. The centre claims that since 2018, over 2,000 crore has been allocated for stubble management and awareness campaigns in Punjab. Moreover, the centre claims machines funded by it for stubble clearance are lying unused, while 73,000 machines have been given to Haryana farmers in the last four years. In fact, such is the situation in Punjab, in fact in Barnala, a group of farmers held government officials hostage for three hours and seized their vehicles after they tried to douse farm fires. In 2022, it is another season of blame game and inaction and it is the Aam Admi which is once again at the receiving end. The air quality in Delhi remains in the very poor category and the NCPCR has even moved the Delhi government to close schools and safeguard the health of children. Till when will this cycle keep repeating itself? When will we be able to find a permanent solution to this problem? Before I get the guests, here's what happened today. These images sum up Punjab government's failure to control farm fires raging across the state. A group of government officials brought a fire engine to a village in Barnala to douse farm fires. But their mission was turned on its head when farmers held the officials hostage. Farmers took control of the fire engine, drove it to a Gurdwara and parked it there. They finally let the officials leave after three hours. <laughs> While farmers are refusing to douse farm fires, they are also not using machines bought with central aid to manage crop residue. When we spoke uh, to different uh, district farmers uh, in the state, they have been saying that no adequate help has been given to them. Uh, so some way or the other, the machines have not been able to directly reach out to all the farmers. This is the reason why uh, the farmers are compelled to burn the stubble. More than a lakh machines procured under the central government scheme are lying unused. कई बार हमारी मशीन उस गांव में पहुंची हुई होती है। फिर भी हम देखते हैं कि किसान मशीन की पहुंच से पहुंचने तक भी गिरना करता है कि यार मशीन पे क्यों जाएं तो आग ही लगा दें बस। There is enough and more data to show that Punjab has the maximum cases of farm fires in states neighbouring the capital. And it's this toxic smoke from the farm fires which is turning Delhi's air hazardous. Yet the Ahmadmi Party, which is in power in both Delhi and Punjab, is blaming the centre. Kendra Sarkar ko BJP ko kisano se itni nafrat kyu hai? Usi nafrat ka karan hai ki aaj itna dhuwa charo taraf ho raha hai. Hame kisano ko samadhan dena padega. Delhi Sarkar apne star pe jo kar sakti hai, hum kar rahe hai. Eh jidhi Bharti Janta Party hai, Centre Sarkar hai. गल गल तो पंजाब के किसानों गाला दे जाते हैं पंजाब के किसान आए पंजाब के किसान ऐ क्यों करते हैं तो बिहार वाले बुलाओ राजस्थान वाले बुलाओ दिल्ली वाले बुलाओ पंजाब वाले बुलाओ हरियाणे वाले बुलाओ हिमाचल में यूपी में बुलाओ नॉर्थ इंडिया की प्रॉब्लम है सो इज द फाइट अगेंस्ट फार्म फायर बींग हेल्ड होस्टेज बाय द पंजाब गवर्नमेंट Let's give you an understanding of how Punjab lies at the center of this crisis. If we look at 2021, in the period from September 15th to October 31st, 
The number of farm fires in Punjab stood at a whopping 13,269. Compare that to Haryana. You have 2,914 farm fires and just 51 in Uttar Pradesh. So can Punjab government and the Aam Aadmi Party government actually blame Haryana or Uttar Pradesh? That is not the correct picture. If you look at 2022, in the same period, the number of farm fires in Punjab stand at 16,004. Compare that to Haryana, 1, uh, 1,995. And in Uttar Pradesh, it is just 33. So this is how the real truth or statistics stand as of today. Curtailing pollution, remember, has been at the center of Aam Aadmi Party's politics when it campaigned in Punjab elections. Between 2016 to 2021, the Aam Aadmi Party said that stubble burning in Punjab has made Delhi a gas chamber. At that time, the state of Punjab was being governed by the Congress. The Aam Aadmi Party said that it is not the vehicular pollution or industries. Farm fires in Punjab are the root of this crisis. Now they are saying farm fires is not the root of this crisis. They went on to say that farmers in Punjab are being forced to burn stubble as the government does nothing for them. The Delhi government gave farmers biodecomposer chemicals, as according to the Ahmadi Party, and Punjab should do the same. Now Punjab and Delhi has the same government, which is of one party, which is the Ahmadi Party. But now they are in power in Punjab and the tune has changed. Now they are saying that Punjab farm fires are not choking them. So how things change with the change in government, same government at the center, same government in, the, in Delhi and in the state of Punjab, the language is changing. Now the Aam Admi Party says that it is Haryana which is causing pollution in Delhi. And the state government has got no help from the center. So where does the Aam Admi turn as inaction continues to turn the capital, that is the capital city of India, Delhi, into a gas chamber. Let me take all these questions to the panelists who are joining me on the, deb uh, on the debate tonight. Shahzad Punawala, national spokesperson of the BJP, joining me here in the studio. Siddharth Sharma, spokesperson of the Aam Aadmi Party. We have Dr. Sanjeev Agarwal. He is the former additional director of CPCB. And Vimlindu Jha is an environmentalist. Siddharth Sharma... Mr. Bhupendra Yadav, who is the Environment Minister, has said it is the same government, which is same party, which is running both the states. And the state of Punjab has seen 19% rise in farm fires over 2021. Haryana has seen a 30.6% drop. Just today, Punjab saw 3,634 fires. And then he has quoted statistics of how there has been inaction on the part of the Punjab government. Will you stop blaming and, and looking for a new punching bag as far as your responsibility of fixing environment is concerned? Uh, Amalia, it's a bit too rich uh, when people are suffocating to shift blame on anybody and Aam Admi Party certainly doesn't believe in that. As far as we are concerned, we trust in God, but uh, we trust data more when, when the issue comes to that. So uh, I hope since the, there is a very serious charge on me, uh, you'll give me... 30 to 45 seconds to just defend me with data, just three data points. One, two, three. Point number one. Point number one. The first data is that compared to last year, one lakh hectare less of land is parali is being burnt in Punjab as of today. And this this is not data that we are saying. This is from the Central Pollution Control Board data. Point that that is point number one. To reiterate, uh, last year at this time nearly 5 lakh hectares of land was uh, under Parali uh, burning. This year, it is less than 3 lakh hectare of land. Hmm. Second data. Uh, second data is that uh, if last year there were 30,000 decomposing and other machines working to stop uh, Parali burning, stubble burning, this year there are 1 lakh 25, more than 1 lakh 25,000 machines. So if the farm fires are coming down, that is because three time increase in machineries has happened. Point number three, if the entire blame for uh, pollution is on Parali burning, hmm. how come for the viewers, I'm asking, how come that today the AQI of Ludhiana is at 274, whereas the AQI of air quality index of Faridabad is at 391. 
so is it so that the burning fires in punjab are not creating any pollution there but they are creating okay. pollution in faridabad okay. absolutely no okay. but the point here is that huh. is this enough to to bring back fresh air in north india including delhi absolutely not okay. we have to do more you have whether it is amr ki specific points and you have given three specific datas shehzad punawala data specific response please absolutely and uh, facts should not be given in a manner that they conceal the truth because out of those one uh, those 120000 machines were actually purchased with the 1347 crore rupees given by the center for crop ma residue management to the state of punjab over the last 5 years this is a fact point number 2 this is not a function of money alone mr kg by the way first let's understand what is the real cause of pollution is it as mr kgwal till last year said that it was parali burning in punjab because i have a statement of his dated 2018 and please hear this this has been published in the pti stubble burning in punjab solely responsible for rising delhi pollution is that the stand today because your colleague nikhil when he in uh, interviewed the agriculture minister of punjab yeah. mr dhaliwal said punjab's parali has nothing to do with delhi's pollution so who is the speaking the truth kgwal or the agriculture minister of punjab secondly hmm. parali is responsible for pollution respond. but once again i did not interrupt you let's have a special yes. wait hmm. but it is 14 to 25% for a period of few days right hmm. uh, punjab's uh, by the way this fact is not correct the acreage of parali burning may have come down but the instances of parali burning in punjab have increased by 35% and it has come down consequently in haryana so it's not a question of giving money alone what happened to the bio decomposer that you are going to use in punjab we don't have answers about that the fact is for all year round pollution that takes place in delhi there are three or four causes which have not been addressed one the vehicular pollution to for instance the center has given eastern and western peripheral expressways but what has the state government done two industrial pollution how many in and i want specific answer industries were shut down for pollution three biomass burning what has been done on that to tackle that four what is the solution that you have come up with for the other causes of pollution like road dust what about those vacuum cleaners that you are going to purchase these main causes of pollution in delhi all year round and when the parali season also gets over have not been addressed okay. and this is why delhi is a gas okay. chamber S Siddhan and Shana. finally uh, finally just one last point huh. this thing that the center has not helped the center has given almost twice the amount of funds to punjab compared to haryana and other states okay. the center Siddhan has given 1 lakh 20000 so, machines so, out of which 11000 machines are missing by the way okay. where are those machines okay so money unutilization is a charge that is coming your way that 11275 machines have gone missing is what the center is saying and also that last year 212 crore was left unspent and the that there is confusion in the uh, aam aadmi party government as to what really is causing this kind of pollution is this parali burning or stubble burning as mr kejriwal used to say till the time uh, it is uh, uh, you know punjab had his government or it will it be a different stand this time yeah uh, maria first of all let me congratulate uh, the bjp spokesperson for agreeing that uh, percentage of uh, uh, percentage acreage has come down as far as parali burning is concerned point number 2 he very clearly diverted the issue from uh, parali burning very cleverly diverted the issue from parali parali burning to the pollution in delhi being because of vehicular traffic and i agree to that and that is why the delhi government has come up with a red light on gadi off scheme the plan which has been stopped by the union government point number 1 point number 2 as far as jasin very clearly shahzad very clearly said something about construction being a dust being a very big factor in delhi yes it is a dust is a very big factor that is the reason why aam aadmi party government in delhi yesterday stopped the construction and incidentally that construction was happening on the bjp headquarters and we have also find them so the issue here and as far as the money issue is concerned that is the key thing the key thing here is that the modi government has always been anti farmer it came up with anti farmer laws anyway the farmers protested and the, uh, the and the union government uh, uh, retracted from the farm laws now for in this very program in the last segment i clearly said that is this enough no for more to happen we have to help the farmers okay. and for that the delhi government let, let me and ask that question because shahzad quickly scheme. 20 seconds response from you the and yeah. then then there are others as well yes uh, okay 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 okay, okay. Uh, what has happened at least let's not have sound pollution already the scheme of 
of giving an incentive to the farmers to stop st completely stubble Fine. burning Fine. 1000 rupees and we are asking the central government yes. to come up with a matching grant we'll keep of the noise low from okay. their end. yes no, so no, let's no, address no, this one by one let's address this one one second so now can we that yes. is my submission i have okay. heard you yes hmm. first of all sir i think you are suffering from selective hearing which can be a sanction of sound pollution I am asking you first, can you tell me officially whether Mr. Kejriwal is right when he says Punjab Parali is solely to blame or is he wrong and your agriculture minister is right that the causes of Delhi's pollution lie in Delhi because he said today to Nikhil Lakhwani that look, my Punjab's Parali is not responsible. So you clear that confusion out and let us Alex. breathe free air. Please sir, don't interrupt. I heard Alex, you out. Sir, I heard you out, Maria. Maria, 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 Maria I, it can't be a one-sided debate. No, no, no. The, this Sita is Shanma. not the way. Sita Shanma, you this have is not to the listen way. to him now. You have yes. to be patient, yes. Secondly, ah. the Haryana government has not got any extra funds from the center. The Haryana government has made arrangement for its farmers at 1000 rupees per acre. How much is the Punjab government, if the Punjab government feels, truly feels that it is a function of money that needs to be given and the center is a big, big bad wolf that's not giving you the money. Although we've paid for your machines, we've paid and we've given you more funds. Mm. How much money have you given? And let me give you another statistic. DPCC, which is the central body to tackle pollution, out of 344 members, 187 positions are vacant. Is this center's fault? Also, green fund collected by Delhi government. 1300 crores, only 280 crores spent in the last six years. You have 800 crores. Why don't you spend that money onto the Punjab farmers and save the people of Delhi if you think this is a function of money? And thirdly, sir, what bio decomposer ka kya hua? Because I have Mr. Kejriwal's tape where he says, Dekhe ji, now our government will Punjab and we will add all the bio-decomposers and then everything will happen. Tell us what the solution is. Tell us what the solution is. Or there is no solution on this solution. Or there is no solution on this solution. Vimlendu Jha, come in on this. Center versus state, state versus state, something we have been debating, Vimlendu, you and I, for the last few years. And again, this uh, it's, it's become like an evergreen, unfortunate story. Uh, but let's not forget one statistics. Absolutely. While we, while we look at, you know, the statistics being thrown by one party or the other, the chief minister of Punjab has, in, in his own turf, which is Sangroor, I'm going to give you a statistic. Last year... September 15th through November 2nd, farm fires in Sangroor stood at 1,266. This year, they have shot up by 139%, rising to 3,025. Vimlendu, who is to be blamed? Explain to us. First, Maria, you know, I don't know how, how tired or frustrated you are. I am very tired, frustrated and angry with, this, with, the, with you know, having this conversation with you again and again and again, year after year. And on the day when our medical fraternity, all our doctors are telling us that most of the hospitals have run out of hospital beds and ICUs, children and normal people also are uh, running out of breath. We have, uh, you know, I don't want to use names, but we have representatives from BJP and Aam Aadmi Party not showing a uh, you know, an, an iota of, of acceptance of mistake. Imagine when COVID happened, Prime Minister did not wait for respective state governments to take take a, take a stand. He really thought about the entire country and this is a North India problem. Second point, hmm. you know, indeed stubble burning is a problem. But at the same time, please understand, stubble burning is a problem only for 30 to 40 days in a year. You know, can, can Siddharth Sharma, Aam Aadmi Party person tell me that November 20th, things will be better in Delhi? No, things AQI of Delhi is going to be as bad or perhaps worse after 20 days when stubble burning will stop. And because, you know, today, Environment Minister was asking citizens of Delhi to do not do this and that. Where is the responsibility of our state government? Where is our? Where are our public buses? Where are our dust cleaning uh, and uh, you know water sprinkling machines? Everything is missing, and we have these loud mouth spokespersons of political parties who are actually in government. They are responsible for every child who is entering the ICU today, this night, tomorrow, and all of this week. And here they're throwing some data or the other uh, on, on, on the citizenry and making a fool out of us. It's a public health emergency. A million and a half people die. Shahzad and Siddharth, please, please understand, this is not about election. It's a collective responsibility. And indeed, it's the, it's the dishonesty and mischief of Aam Aadmi Party 
in Punjab and in Delhi and, and indeed it's a reluctance and politicking of central government when it doesn't want to come and take charge of this situation when the state governments have completely failed. Indeed state governments have failed but it's actually about the entire airshed. North India is polluted and Delhi what? is yes. uh, you know, by the way Delhi's it, problem If it uh, is a North Delhi's India problem because of Delhi. then solutions have to be sought and what, are, what is being done if the states are failing then what is being done is the center now thinking of formulating a solution? Before I seek all those answers from uh, the politicians, a quick word from you, Dr. Agarwal. Uh, we have heard about these decomposers. We have heard about, you know, my question is that farmers have to be given affordable way to prevent and perhaps stop stubble burning. If those machines yeah. are reach, uh, reaching them or perhaps not reaching them because there are multiple reports that are coming in which shows that several machines have gone missing. That's what uh, is being claimed by the central government here. Uh, unutilization of money as well. My question to you, sir, is that if you have a very complicated machine, perhaps the farmers will not know how to use it. But I mean, you listen to me. First of all, uh, I think that the whole game is that become political. I, I, don't, I don't agree. Uh, I don't agree that the points mentioned by uh, many people here. What I will say that uh, quickly I will mention you that we have even I have started my work in 2003 mm -hmm. and I found that the uh, Punjab is burning a horrible uh, 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 means the burning of fields are very very high and then NASA has given the data that uh, the air shed air shed is one and that is basically the air is coming from there and that is that is true and we have got so many pictures during my so before my super renovation i have got these pictures and we got the all the proofs so i think we we should not play with the people of india citizen of india uh, we should not blame to each other i think this is the right time now we should not go for burning of parali uh, there is no but how do you stop the farmers from burning parali you have to give an alternative what is the we that have given, alternative madam, we have given we have given i ah. i remember that uh, when when we formed a commission for air quality management, before that we have started giving funds to the state government. We have given a lot of funds. We have given the option that you should not go for burning. You should go for um, just making the palletization, pallets of that. And you can use the fuel as a fuel. So why you are burning in the field? So this is a very harmful uh, Im Im impact to the human being. So people are dying itself in, in Punjab itself. I found that people are dying there because of the Choking. You see, th this is the season where the air quality shed, air shed is now, now yeah. and then all pollutants will not go up, spread immediately okay. and it will be remain there for quite a long time. Okay. So this is the thing that uh, we should not, I think, blame, blame to each other. Uh, I, I don't think so. We should make yes. it a political. And, 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 and since it is should... political, let me go back yeah. to the politicians yeah. on the panel. Shahzad Punawala, Siddhar yeah. Sharma. Uh, Siddhar Sharma, can the can the Amadi Party sound a note of that? Let's come together. You know, rather than putting a blame on Haryana or putting the blame on the center, if there is a solution that is needed, then all the players and the stakeholders must come together. Can that cordial note be sounded by you? Yes, of of, of course it should be, and it's a very good uh, suggestion. And right here on the national television, folded hands, we are asking that just like there is a Kaveri, if you if you remember, there's a uh, Kaveri water dispute between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, and the prime minister chairs the arbitration panel. So since this is a pan-state issue, it includes Western UP, it includes Haryana, it includes parts of Rajasthan, it includes Delhi also, because in 5,000 acres of Delhi also, there is uh, 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 agriculture going on. Hmm. So, since this is a pan state issue, I think the Prime Minister with folded hands, we should be asking the Prime Minister to intervene here, make all the people sit together and just as the experts in this panel very rightly said, there are solutions. The problem is those solutions cannot happen in isolation. If Delhi solute, if, uh, just as a matter of fact, if Delhi is, uh, Delhi has 5,000 acres of agriculture, the entire 5,000 acres of agriculture land today, there is the, the, the biodecomposer is being 
being used. There is no parali burning happening in Delhi, but that doesn't solve the problem. If Punjab also stops parali burning tomorrow entirely, still Haryana would be there, Western UP would be there. So I think the Prime Minister has to, just like uh, in, in, on, on national television with folded hands again, we are asking okay. that the Prime Shazam, Minister should intervene Shazam, in will, this will matter, the center play make the, all the state play, governments sit play, together and come up the with a holistic brother. solution. Uh, I don't think, Maria, I don't think there's, I can, yes, there, there's no solution. Maria, yes. if I may, center play the you know, big, big there brother. is no need for folded hands in a country which is governed by a cooperative federalism spirit. There is actually an inter-state meeting that happens every uh, second week or every month and in fact the center has been writing to each of the states right from the beginning of this year and therefore some states which have in the name of cooperative federalism or in the name of cooperative accountability or collective accountability we can't forget the fact that some states have acted. Haryana managed to reduce its double burning down by 33%. Punjab has not. What is the reason for that? We need to fix the accountability of that. The but center's role, let me just give you... Well, now, Maria, please, I can't, I did not, I heard him out. This is not the way to debate at least at 10, 13 and 9. Every statement of mine is interrupted by an Aadmi Party. Yes. Okay, The center, let me... Maria, this is not... Maria, I will leave this debate if this is not going No, no, no. Magnanimity, that is the question. But Maria, why am I not being allowed magnanimously to make my point? Yes, please, go ahead. The center, let me tell you what they did just for Delhi. Hmm. Vehicular pollution. Eastern and Western peripheral expressway built by whom? Who is uh, encouraging us to shift to CNG? By the way, please tell me the one ashram extension flyover that they have to construct has been pending for so many months. What have they done on the road dust cleaning machines that they promised would be here? What have they done on the fact that they were going to shut down industries which are polluting? Have, can we list five industries they've shut down? The point is that Haryana acted other states acted and also in Punjab this is an issue not just of a function of money but it is about cropping pattern and cropping techniques. How come this is not such a big problem in Uttar Pradesh? How come this is not anymore a big problem in Haryana? It is a problem in Punjab because the state government there believes more in spending on advertisement than taking concrete steps and therefore I ask matters. of course we as a centre are taking all the steps but the problem is that Mr. Kejriwal and Mr. Uh, Bhagwant Man don't seem to have the get, solution get except for transferring the blame on somebody else. My limited question. So One question. Huh. Can I ask a question of accountability from this government? Okay. Or in the name of Siddhar collective Sharma. responsibility, no accountability? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, Just that is a question. fair point. That's Just a fair question. point. That's a fair point. Just Shazad. one question. Yes. If can it's you about, please, huh, if can it is you about accountability, me? you have to be held accountable as well, right? Siddharth Sharma. No, no, with folded hands, Maria, with folded hands, I'm asking him. Out of the 1300 crores meant for the green fund, 280 crores was spent. Where is the rest of the money? In advertisements? Why hasn't that money been used? How many new buses have been purchased, DTC? Please tell me. Mr. Sharma, oh. we gave the metro yeah, in the yeah, centre, yeah, has given yeah, the metro. Sir, Where are you. the buses? As far as, advertise, as far as advertisements is concerned, please don't worry about it. Across the nation, on every petrol bank, whose photo is there on the advertisement, everybody knows. So you know, you are a state government who uses Punjab's knows. money to advertise Delhi's so-called work in no. Karnataka. So I don't think we need, but you know, this is not the debate. Please answer the questions you're accountable for, sir. Ask for magnanimity. Aam Admi Party showed its magnanimity. You are still in the blame this game. This is magnanimous. Now, as far as if the blame game has to happen, I am asking you a very clear question. Okay. Why I want to understand to from Vimlendu Jha. Yes, in the name of collective responsibility, you cannot run, for, uh, run away from your accountability. That is also a truth. So you know, that is a fair point. Uh, you know. No, no, no. Sharma. This kind of debate is not helpful. It's not helping the citizens of Delhi. The point here is, that yes, it's good to talk about collective responsibility, but what about the accountability of the Ahmadi Party government? They cannot run away from that. Vimlendu Jha, I want to understand for my son, who should I hold accountable? A little 10 year old is getting worked up because of the it's gas chamber that we are living in. See, Maria, I am not able to hear you properly, but you know, if you're asking about who is accountable, yes. it is, if that's your question, everybody is accountable. Everybody, both the spokesperson and the central government and, and state governments, respective state governments are accountable. All of them have to come together and solve this crisis. By the way, this year is over, it's too late. But you know what, 2021 we thought that they, it will be, you know, they'll do something in 2022. 22 to, 2022 is also over. 
we need a medium to long term solution okay. we need Shazan, all these Shazan, political parties to come together they to all are mischievous and dishonest Maria, who will with, give that medium uh, to long term Maria, solution I, you know i appreciate vimlendu's concerns and what he's saying but vimlendu you know that by disproportionately apportioning the blame you are actually allowing those who are guilty to get away let me explain why i have great regard for vimlendu's work but here's the center gives money for crop residue management has meetings informs the state governments take action some state governments act the ones that need to act may waste their time on advertisement and when we tell that state government please get your act together they say nahi nahi ab center kuch kar le right. and they we start really planning and bringing the, the center that's not fair shahzad gunawala sadar sharma dr sanjeev agarwal and vimle no thank you so much for joining us shifting focus to debate 2 after firing the top leadership of twitter on day 1 elon musk has stirred the tech world with the announcement that twitter's verified badge will now come at a cost this comes as part of the premium subscription plan called Twitter Blue which will cost the user $8 a month Musk's rationale has been that Twitter needs to make money and a large chunk of it can't just come from advertisements he says the new subscription will offer priority replies mentions and searches and cut down on ads by half Twitter Blue members will also be able to post long videos and audio in a move to attract more content creators but here is the flip side twitter's earlier verification system handed out the blue tick to notable users via an application system to essentially differentiate between genuine and parody accounts but how will it change the ecosystem if that firewall is now subject to a price tag will the blue tick now lose its credibility will the implementation of payment and subscription systems cause an exodus of twitter users or will it expand user experiences and help the social media giant cash in on its massive global base before i get all these questions to the guests here's a look at twitter 2.0 under elon musk it's official a verified badge on your twitter id better known as the blue tick will now cost 8 us dollars a month Twitter's new boss Elon Musk spelled it out in a tweet on Tuesday, hitting out at what he called the current lords and peasants system and dubbing the $8 a month charge power to the people. He also had a message for critics, please continue complaining. Responding to feedback, Musk said prices will be adjusted as per a country's purchasing power parity. People with blue ticks will have multiple benefits which include priority in replies, mentions and search, which is essential to defeat spam and scam. the ability to post long video and audio and half as many ads the buzz around a fee for the blue tick has sparked intense debate many say it's not worth paying for and questions the idea of a reliable tweet others argue there's nothing wrong in charging for it as a revenue earner for the company the price tag had drawn a response from none other than best selling author stephen king expressing disappointment mr king lashed out in a tweet saying twitter should pay him and saying he'd be gone like Enron. The Enron mention obviously refers to the epic fall of the major US corporation after years of rapid growth. Musk did respond to King saying Twitter can't rely on advertisers even asking if $8 would be right. He also termed it the only way to defeat the bots and trolls. The decision is made. Want a blue tick on your Twitter ID? Pay $8 a month. But the debate continues. why a fee for a blue tick is justified versus the concerns raised and how it may actually end up harming twitter as we know it so here are the arguments on both sides of the debate those who are for blue tick and the payment for it say it is a legal business model while the counter is that it dilutes the qualification for a verification badge remember there used to be a proper procedure that used to be followed for any kind of blue tick or the verification those in favor of the price tag are saying that it will prevent identity theft and cloning but the counter then is that the, that it will open the flood gates of an exodus to other platform will who then benefit finally those who are for that payment of $8 say that the move will full filter out bots and trolls from the ecosystem that's what elon musk is saying but the counter is 
that it will weaken the credibility of tweets from verified IDs. So it will be verified IDs without any checks or verification process and IDs that we know otherwise as well. So what will be the difference between the two if it's about $8 a month? Let me bring in my guests. Abhishek Asthana is founder of Ginger Monkey. Arvind Gupta, head and co-founder of Digital India Foundation. NS Napinai is Cyber Sathi Foundation founder and an advocate. We also have uh, advocate uh, Hushbu Jain. I'm going to begin with you, Napinai. Uh, you know, although Twitter will be a free to use app, how good is the idea of charging $8 per month for a verification badge or blue tick as it is called? Will it make Twitter a perhaps more elitist space? Uh, Myra, there was one clarification I wanted to bring in before I answer your question. You mentioned in the opening statement that uh, the blue tick is going to be given for the asking and there is a possibility it may not follow the verification process. So that's the clarification I wanted to bring in that the assumption ought to be and if that is not what is being intended by Twitter, they may want to do a relook on it, that they may charge for a service which they have been providing as free so far. But that does not mean they can do away with the verification process mm. because the very idea of offering that uh, service for $8 means that they are doing the procedure mandated for verification. So it's not about earning $8, it's about providing a service for $8 and that service is about actually doing the verification. So the actual verification process cannot be done away with irrespective of whether it's free or paid. Okay. And as far as whether that's creating an elitism, if you look at Elon Musk's statement, what he seems to be saying is that earlier the blue tick was elitist okay. because it was being given out to celebrities, whereas now anybody can have it. That seems to be more of a democratization process okay. where if you believe that you want a verified uh, account, you will pay for that service and take it. Hmm. Again, I repeat, that doesn't mean that the actual verification process can be done away with. Okay, so the it verification process, we still do not know whether the same verification process will be followed, um, Arvind Gupta. Uh, you know, we have often seen that people are unwilling to pay for media subscriptions and even content on OTT platforms. Some platforms that charge for value-added content struggle to get subscribers. Do you think this will lead to Twitter moving away its people or will it really create revenue stream from users on this account? So I think you have to look at it. What First of all, what Napinai said is very correct. The process dilution is not what they have actually talked about. The verification process still remains as strict as possible, but they're trying to say, hey, you are partners. You are these uh, people who have a lot of influence. You pay for using our service. And with that, it could be, uh, there'll be a little bit of... Uh, you know, service level agreements or some some kind of servicing that will come along with that, I hope. But more than that, what it also does is it's it's saying that, you know, you know, if you see the 400,000 odd uh, verified users that Twitter has, a lot of it is media houses, a lot of it are actual influencers, athletes, uh, ma many people, uh, you know, social media people or uh, creative economy people, they're actually finding ways to already monetize their, their Twitter following. So what Alan Musk is saying is, hey, this is a way to for me to uh, also ask for a share pie, but for a consumer, for a, for ninety nine point five percent of the consumers, this remains free. And and I think that is the um, that is the game that I think he's trying to say okay. that it is your news, your content. If you are spreading, I mean, you think about a news. How will it really, Arvind Gupta? How will what it really do? help increase engagement? That's what also Elon Musk is promising. That you will have better engagement. Yes. So, so what? It, How will it really do that? See, you basically right now a lot of this engagement is uh, is all, probably not re only related to the eight dollars, but it is related to more of the the fact that there is a lot of these bots in the ecosystem, and there's a lot of spam, and I think that's one of the most contentious issue that Elon Musk has fought over the last six, seven months while he's been, uh, he's been, you know, fighting legal battle to take over Twitter is been that he, we need genuine accounts. We need genuine users. And that now that he has bought it, he wants to bring the genuine users, the genuine engagement. And really, okay. I mean, if you have the $8 or whatever amount of money you're paying for it, you end up using a service as a consumer a little bit more 
responsibly perhaps then okay. you're not doing it so oh, i think okay. that is his intent of okay. bringing about engagement okay. but it remains free for 99.5% of the users and that's the important point the last point i do want to make uh, maria is people are benefiting from twitter and the reach of twitter that they've created hmm. they don't want to let go of their user base they have on twitter so this is uh, this is what he is i think smartly done is He's talking to those users. He may lose a few. Definitely, he may lose out of the half a million verified accounts. He may lose a few. Who say, I, I don't want to, you know, pay eight dollars a month or whatever the purchasing power parity cost he's talking about. But there will be people who have bid such a large audience that they will, you know, pay that amount and actually, um, and actually continue to grow their audience. Okay. You know, Abhishek Astana they are goes, goes this by audience. the name uh, Gabbar on Twitter. He has over one million followers, but doesn't have a blue tick. Um, and uh, Abhishek, you continue to set the narrative on Twitter. And what does this uh, frightfully expensive eight dollars, I would say, because it is a huge amount, mean to yeah. somebody like you? Uh, you're you're right, actually. See, India is a market which is very very uh, ROI driven. Every other dollar we spend uh, on a subscription month on month basis, we are very mindful of what is the return we are getting. So uh, for, a, for a consumer like me, who is on Twitter with uh, this following, and uh, I've been tweeting, uh, reaching out to people, and I haven't seen any kind of a drop in my reach, uh, uh, given the fact that I don't have a blue tick. And uh, so the point is for me, I need to know whether uh, there'll be a substantial increase in, in, the, in the engagement or my experience as Elon is uh, claiming uh, for me to actually pay that amount. And similarly, uh, so the issue is that this is a recognition usually, right? This is something that was done to uh, identify people uh, so that people don't impersonate. This is for public figures, this is for their power users, uh, where they're giving a blue tick to them so that they continue to be on the platform. But now suddenly uh, a recognition uh, kind of, uh, uh, that is being monetized now. Now there's a monetary value associated with it. Imagine, uh, suppose I go to the platform and see a blue tick uh, tomorrow, and uh, the first thing that will come to my mind is whether this person has actually paid for this blue tick or this person is actually a big public figure, uh, which is uh, whose voice yes. or whose tweets I should yes. take seriously. So, so there's the a, there's credibility a question and... will be there in your mind. Yeah, yeah, true. Yes. Uh, so, Khushbu Jain, you know, I'll take that thread a little forward. Is the move solely meant to create a more level playing field and equalize privileges of those who had found favor with the earlier Twitter management? Because we had seen which Elon Musk has often called them as lords and peasants system, which was often accused of having left leaning. See, uh, in a way, yes, you can say that because if you see company had a policy, Twitter till now had a policy that it did not offer verification to uh, parody or to most fictional accounts or to the accounts that violate their Twitter rules, uh, uh, including around spam, around harassment, hate speech, fake news and so on and so forth. And any Twitter user has been able to request for verification. That was the that was the norm till now, though it was very unclear if those accounts were being processed and on what policy and in case they are not being verified, what is the reason behind that? So that ambiguity or that vagueness was still there and that arbitrariness was still existing in those things. And looking at that is where I think the new new norm which we are bringing in that let everybody have. Uh, let there be a transparency, let there be an openness, whether whosoever wants to have a blue tick can go for a blue tick. And let's not let's not restrict blue tick to just one thing. I think what they're talking about is advertisements also that that, you know, uh, 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 90% that is Twitter's uh, $5 billion annual revenue comes from the advertisements. Mm. And somebody who wants to see half of advertisements, as many of half of an advertisements can pay for the services and can, you know, opt for that that specific uh, uh, thing and I think it's not just Twitter there are many other services service providers which are available where we pay for prices including LinkedIn and others mm -hmm. where we get uh, uh, services which are less with the advertisements mm -hmm. but but nonetheless nonetheless uh, uh, I think what we have to yet see is uh, uh, what kind of transparency that will come with this payment process or other process or how verification process will be done okay. as Napine and all other panelists were talking about that whether verification strictness what would be the norm one part is paying but the other part of what is verification all about is something which you have to yet wait and watch and see what comes, uh, okay. comes next. Uh, Arvind Gupta, how can we ensure that all users, irrespective of their verification status, in fact, complete their KYCs, which should be standardized and uh, be available to security agencies? 
uh, you know, if they need, uh, if if they really need it, because we have seen how uh, countries have had greater challenges, uh, particularly to do with security in, in the context of how these uh, these uh, platforms have functioned in the past. So, Napinai, there is uh, sorry, the uh, Maria, there is a, always a case of a balance between anonymity and uh, KYC and uh, and 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 this need for free speech. On one end, we're talking about free speech and promoting more free speech. And, you know, we've debated this in the past. Um, uh, and I think this is a very something that has a very nuanced issue. I, I If I say that we should always have KYC for products, you know, they rely on a telephone number. The telephone number uh, at the back end has a KYC. So to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to answer your question, I think there has to be a more stringent process of accounts and um, and the bots and the spams have to go out but the problem cannot be solved by twitter alone the whole ecosystem has to take a very big view because if you're coming from a you know a google account or one of these um, virtual sims and you you put a you know uh, put that number in you can create many accounts not every country has harmonization of policy so while india may suddenly say that you know every number that is operating out of india will need a uh, we'll need a phone number and uh, we'll need that. But then you'll have to also balance it with this whole issue of anonymity, uh, anonymity, anonymity and free speech. And, and you know, I want to I won't be doing things that I, I want to be able to do, which I'm not able to do. I do want to bring in one point, though, which is very, very critical to this debate. Okay. Is that we, what is this whole advertising model that we've seen? Twitter has advertisers who are trying to promote um a, a less uh, data driven advertisers they're mostly trying to promote uh, products or thoughts or leadership thought leadership whereas the whole other advertising world that twitter is surrounded with hmm. uh, the, you know the other companies which run 85 90% of the global digital advertising is all driven with the fact that whenever the product is free you are the product and they eat our data and then you know is churn out pro uh, advertising to us i do hope i'm not saying this will happen i do hope by creating these revenue streams, Twitter will really lead, and Elon Musk, I hope, can do that, will lead by ensuring data privacy, this whole thing of users, and the privacy of users really gets taken care of, the consumer rights get taken okay. care of. So uh, I think um, this whole innovative approach that uh, Elon Musk is doing is to, to bring about more, um, more revenue streams so that he's less okay. advertising dependent and more dependent on the actual power user. So okay. I think then, that's a very, very, that's, that's, you know, none of us are, are, uh, are oracles who can predict what's going to happen. Yeah. I was part of the web 1.0 revolution, by the way, I'm dating myself when the hotmail slash there was a competing uh, company to hotmail and they started, they tried to charge a dollar a month mm. for using email services, which, which suddenly the consumers that as Kushbu is saying, shifted from that service to another one. The fortunate thing that today Twitter has is it doesn't have a, a similar platform of this uh, this nature and this scale globally that is there. So uh, is that I think the it's a calculated advantage risk. It's a them. risky move. It's a calculated yes. risk. One will have to see how it plays okay, out. Okay, so, uh, so Napinai, the idea of giving a secondary tag to public figures and politicians uh, creates a class within a class. And does it not defeat the purpose of creating an egalitarian space on Twitter as is the stated objective, according to Elon Musk. Law, when we talk about equality, it is equality within specified classes. Hmm. So in that sense, I don't think it would be really, uh, you know, an elitist aspect. If they already have that elitism in terms of, you know, blue ticks being associated with celebrities. If it is going to become available to all, if it is just going to signify a verified account and that's it, then I would say it's actually a move in reverse of balancing it out and making it more open. And ultimately, it's a corporate entity. It's going to work on what works best for the corporate entity ultimately, as long as legalities that are mandated for uh, what they will now fall under is as the significant social media intermediary, as long as they don't violate those kind of provisions, as long as the blue tick is not going to be given out for the asking without the verification process, as long as the process also is not going to encourage impersonations, etc., 
then they are on a good wicket okay we can't really question it in terms of um, you know whether it is the right thing to do or not i'm sure they would have also taken their decision based on a business uh, model analysis etc okay so from the legal perspective this is what i would close out with to say that in india under the intermediary guidelines of 2021 which continues with the 2022 amendments that were recently notified there is a voluntary verification process that is mandated and the catch phrase there is voluntary so what amounts to voluntary and does this pay your payment okay. of 8 bucks i i want to understand from you abhishek asthana and i have just enough time for you um are you ready to pay for that blue tick um i'm not actually so the thing is uh, i have never actually had a blue tick it's more of a rent for people uh, who already have a blue tick so because they have never seen life without a blue tick actually so imagine if suppose suddenly that is taken away from them then then they they would try to preserve that space and uh, to preserve that real estate they had and they would may, they may pay for it but i have never had a blue tick earlier and uh, i don't see that that having a blue tick will going to change my life on twitter any any further i'm here talking to you guys without a blue tick so that that should say it actually yeah all right and what about others kushbu uh, is 8 dollars too much just specific answer uh, i don't think so they are coming up with 8 dollar the statement comes that jurisdiction wise yes. country specific yes. is going to come up with different different pricing module and we are yet to see what module what pricing comes here and with what uh, uh, package all right arvind gupta anis napinai abhishek and uh, kushbu jain thank you so much for joining us we are slipping into a short break after that King Khan Shahrukh Khan turns 57 who released the trailer of his highly anticipated Pathan on his birthday a special tribute to the superstar after a quick break stay with us for the last train citing that as an example what this government is doing right now is they are constructing new drainages across chennai by spending crores and crores of rupees their leader is known for scientific corrupt person on the following his footsteps they are splurging tax payers money in crores in the name of uh, giving a solution permanent solution rather than identifying the core issue okay desilting has to be done they have not done it 1950 kilometers this year also they have not desilted the work has to start by august the onset of monsoon is october end and november the work has to start by august the planning has to start by july and august this government is only busy in giving away uh, fancy advertisements and fancy promises to the people rather than getting into the real problem of it okay jagdishwaran and please respond to that specific charge uh, on the one hand you need to be desilting the existing drains instead of focusing on that uh you are uh, floating new tenders for a new drainage uh, uh pipelines uh i'll just put it in one word see you can talk to the people in chennai and the people uh, what they say is this year it is much better compared to previous years or i'll put it this way after dmk came into power and for the last one year the work was going on people were a lot of inconvenience people waited people uh, people were not very sure if things would uh, be over before the onset of monsoon but today and yesterday most of the people that i speak with most of the areas that i go people say think things are much better compared to uh, admk it's period it's or compared sir, to sir but look at the pictures uh, from perambur and uh, yeah, and yeah, tiruvallur I mean, and I'm all not, these I'm low lying not, areas I'm not, I'm not, yeah, look look at, look at the pictures are, i mean are, uh, we are, are not issues. making this are, up yeah no 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 wait 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 please there are issues in north chennai there are issues in pattalam there are issues in avadi where there are issues and even here no, the uh, the, the, how much of uh, rainfall how much of rainfall is just 10 cm of rain it's not 10 cm please not, please yeah, uh, so read, read the papers not chennai it is 300 mm 30 cm lungam pakkam it is water. this is constituent as is water as per, as per the records this is the third time in the past 24 years this rainfall has happened in chennai no no okay. but but so, mr jagdishwar no 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 yeah. once again no 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 once once yeah. again again in the 2015 rains when it happened this was the yeah. same argument put forth by the admk at that time that look the the rains were unprecedented there were i think 100 right. mm of rain or so, uh, no, within 24 no, hours what is, what is so that logic I'm, no no that, that's a climate change argument we are going to get more rain in brief uh, in, in in briefer intervals of time that is a reality we have to live with 
what are governments doing on the ground in terms of preparation work for that? That's the question to be answered. I'll, I'll, I'll put you specific areas. Tinagar, Velacheri, where in Tinagar last year, there was so much water. And everybody was saying because of the smart uh, city project that the Adapati government took, it, it happened. Again, in Velacheri, it always gets flooded, it always gets inundated. This time, there was no flood in Velacheri, there was no flood in Tinagar. You would have seen people who have cars, they used to take the cars and put it on the top of the bridges. There are people who used to get candles, there are people who used to uh, buy milk powders, everything. But this time, for the last two days, even though there was heavy rain, I'm not again going to compare to 2015 or something. Yeah. Even though there are heavy rains, people didn't do that. Uh, let me start with you, Karuna Gopal. There used to be a time when Chennai used to pride itself as being you know, high on infrastructure, uh, very futuristic, if you will. Uh, but today, look at what has happened. Just a couple of days of uh, rain and uh, a 24-year-old... Uh, uh, This seems to be a, a global problem now, and um, uh, but what think, what is uh, the issue? Why can't we in the twenty first century invent or produce manhole covers uh, which don't just fly away with one spell of rain, or which don't just get displaced with one spell of rain? So uh, the the problem is this. First of all, uh, we need to understand that uh, when there is a lot of rain, like let's say incessantly pouring and uh, something to the uh, tune of 100 mm per hour, then it is bound to build a lot of pressure and then they, they will fly off like they flew 103 flew off in Bangalore recently. And another issue that is absolutely man-made is that uh, we don't do desilting. We yeah. don't do the cleaning of the manholes periodically. There's a lot of sanitary waste. There's a lot of solid waste stuck to the sides. And uh, we clog we clog these, uh, you know, underground passages. And therefore, uh, these problems are always there. So you could call it civic okay. apathy. Our municipal systems, if you see, typically are completely understaffed. And uh, 